Man, doesn't this look bleak? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. In the last episode, we came here to the peak of Snow Peak, in, <laughs> that sounds silly, in search of the beast of Snow Peak, who's been stealing reek fish from the Zora village. In this episode, we're going to get accosted by shadow beings. How many of them, you ask? Well, let's count them as they come out. Of the magical anus of doom. One, two, three... Three, apparently. I thought it was four. Okay, so let's do the usual. Those two will be a good candidates to kill last. Let's find the loner. There's the loner. Murder him. And let's kill these two. That one's really easy. So with that done, the blizzard up here clears, and we get a clear view of the beast. But once again, like the end of last episode, we're not going to do anything with the beast yet. Because we've just got a warp point here, so we're going to utilize that. Um, because if you remember last episode... See that little gold thing? The golden wolf spawned in Kakariko Graveyard, so we'll head to Kakariko Village. And now here, we actually want to turn back into a human, which we won't be able to do there. Yep, called it. Um, let's run away a little bit and do it here. Apparently that's okay. Um, but actually, before we go to the graveyard, we need to do one brief thing here, because this is as good a chance to do it as any because of how much money we have. If you remember, we've been donating to the bridge cause in Malomart, so let's head inside. And when we talk to this guy, he needs another 442 rupees. Be warned here, you can give him more than this and it won't count for shit, so give him the exact amount he needs unless you want to just give away free rupees. Glorious day! We have collected enough funds to finance repairs to the bridge connecting West Hyrule Castle to Hyrule Field, brother. Those corrupt, price-gouging shops in Castletown are officially on notice. Soon they will rule. We hope you will continue your financial support of our efforts and sell products to the sound of our to sell products in the town and increase prices, brother. This has gone from Jamaican to Russian. I don't know how this happened. Um, so if you talk to him again, he says this time we need two thousand rupees to finance a store in Castletown. So that's our kind of long-term task there. But I just wanted to at least pay off that one while we're here. Let's head to the graveyard now. Yeah, basically, I figured it'd be annoying to, like, have money that we need to give to them and then also have be going through, like, dungeons collecting coins, coins, rupees, and it being like, our wallet is full when there's something we can sink a lot of money into. So that's always a good call for if you need to, if you've got money burning a hole in your wallet, go and donate to your man, Gore Ebizo. Anyway, let's take sword in hand and find this guy. We meet again. There are but a few hidden skills left for me to teach you. I have warned you of this before, but if you fail to execute the hidden skill I'm about to teach you, your life may be forfeit. Do you still wish to master this skill? Very well. But before we begin, I must test you to ensure you have mastered the last secret I taught you, the mortal draw. Now then, come at me! So, reminder of how to do the mortal draw, put your sword away, and then wallop! Excellent. It appears you are certainly capable of performing my lost art. Very well. My sixth hidden skill is the jump strike. Let it be hewn into your mind. One of the basic sword techniques is the jump attack. It inflicts great damage, but none would call it effective against multiple foes. To perform the jump spike, prepare a jump attack, but focus power in your blade. Performing the jump strike is very similar to performing the jump spike that I said, because I'm an idiot. The surge the blade releases can strike enemies all around you. This is the jump strike. Lock on with Z and press and hold A until just the right time to release your strength. So basically, it's kind of like how you charge up a spin attack in a traditional Zelda game. If you'd Z target, and then instead of pressing A to do the jump attack, you press and hold A. And when you charge, hooah! You'll do one attack and you'll also do a shockwave around you. Very useful against large groups of enemies. Hmm, impressive. Do not forget the timing for releasing the power you just felt. The sixth hidden skill, the jump strike, has been passed on. You just learned this jump strike. While Z targeting, do the thing. <laughs> Can't even be asked to read that. There is but one hidden skill left for me to pass on to you. You are already endowed with the strength required of the hero. 
Do you not already feel the courage granted you by the step as it guides you step by step towards your true enemy? Said st step there instead of strength. Good one. Believe in your strength. Continue to push forward unflinchingly and without straying from your path. May we meet again. And so with that, that's a little bit of side questing done. Uh, the jump strike, yeah, I find it really useful when you're against groups of enemies, like he says. And there's one particular part of the game upcoming where it's so useful. And also, looks cool as shit. Right, let's warp on that note back to Snowbeak. And now I think I've kind of put this off for long enough. So, actually, no, fuck it. I'm going to put her off more because I've got one more Poe to get. So let's wait until nightfall. Oh, no, wait, the sun's going up. I think that's going up. Yeah, that's going up. We're not going to wait until nightfall. Fuck it. We're going to go now, and we're going to speak to the beast. Oh, ho, ho. I heard ruckus and her. Uh, just a human. I see humans not often, her. Uh. Why human come to snows? You on spiritual journey? You look for true self? Uh, no. Oh, you look for mirror in such far away place. But you make good climb, and you lucky to meet me. I found shiny mirror piece. Same mirror you look for, huh? Oh, you come to house and see for yourself. I caught fish. I make you hot meal at least. My house far away. We slide there, huh? Do like me. Come! Well, this seems like an extremely good idea. Well, let's do what he did. Let's hit the tree. And a kind of sheet of ice will fall off it. Welcome! And I shit you not, to snowboarding! Simple enough to control. Press and hold A to crouch. Release A to jump. And just kind of make your way down the mountain. You can draw your sword. You can do regular attacks, which swash, swash left and right. Swash isn't a word, but hey. And you can do a spin attack, which looks cool to shit and jumps you at the same time. There are little sideways up here, which you can actually head up onto. And you can get extra rupees and stuff. This can be really difficult with my nunchuck that keeps leaning to the left. Um, but there's potentially actually a lot of money up for grabs here. Oh no, oh no, oh no! Ooh, I'm gonna die. Oh, ow. Okay, so if you get knocked off the thing, you'll just spawn again in it. If you fall off the... Yeah, if you fall off, that's what happens. Anyway, let's head a bit further down. Yeah, if you fall off, you're forced to respawn at the top, so it can be actually... This one can take a while. Get rid of some of these keys by waving your sword just in case they come near you. Oh, potential for a lot of money here if you know what you're doing. Jump right at the edge of this jump. And I bollocksed it. You can potentially get 100 rupees from doing that every time. Because uh, you can do this as much as you want, really. This kind of little snowboarding thing. Let's hop up onto the side here, and you can get a little shortcut... Uh, I'm not going to go to the left there because it's dangerous and I don't want to fall off. Basically, you can see on the map there's that bit that cuts out the corner. Not really any point doing it, apart from the, the fact that, as I say, potentially looks cool as shit, but hey. Um, then we can actually, if we hop up here... Oh, that, nope, 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 ow. Well, that was embarrassing. I meant to hop up there. Did not do so successfully. Let's hop this gap, and again. And there we go. We're actually pretty much at the bottom now. And you can see this cool, creepy manner approaching it. It's like a very Burton feel to it, hasn't it? Um, because, yes, as I said, we only took one episode of fannying around doing non-plot stuff, and we're actually here now, up to our second dungeon in the game. That's a lie. It's not our second dungeon of the game. Whoa! It is... Here? What's with this guy? He's got a nice place. For a beast, man. It, I meant it's the second dungeon of the second phase of the game, so the kind of the mirror of Twilight phase. Let's enter. Welcome to Snow Peak Ruins. This place has a really interesting feel for a dungeon. For a lot of reasons, I'll go through as we get to them, and I really like it. Anyway, first things first, there's a Poe, like, right the fuck in front of you. Cannot miss it. Let's take it down and eat his face. And with that done, well, I think the first thing we should do is try and find Yeto. It's his house, so 
let's kind of um, do that. The only option we really have is we can go to the right, but don't. Just trust me, you want to go straight ahead. And it's not yet, oh. Who? Ah, uh, sorry, I have sickness, huh? Come closer, huh? You cute little human. Husband told me you come. You want to look at mirror, huh? My husband found it, but it's pretty thing, huh? But since I get mirror, I get sick, and then bad monsters appear. So many bad things happen since mirror. So we lock bedroom on third floor where it hangs, huh? Wait, I tell you where key is. You got the map of the mansion. Dungeon map straight away. Very useful. Fever makes head blurry, but it's probably here in room marked by this symbol. Well, you know where our goal is for now, then. But right now, can't even get up. Would you bring it to me, huh? Start with door right here. So, indeed, let's just follow her advice. And we find in this room... Oh, you! Wife look bad, huh? Not healthy since mirror. So I make soup for her. Fish from Zora Village are most nutritious. You're tired, huh? You have some. It gives you energy. So yes, you can get soup from there, which will restore four hearts when you use it. Simple soup. Um, occasionally useful, but I don't actually think I have a... No, I don't actually have a free bottle right now. But there's a thing here. Specifically... It's everyone's favorite Ituku. I'm even going to speed through this text because we've seen it so many times. So, only one way out of this room. And at this point, we actually start heading into the actual real dungeon. This is really just the house. And we get to everyone's favorite, a sliding block puzzle. But this one's relatively easy. What we need to do is have a block press down this switch in the end there. So that first block, just slide it to the left and that's it. That's that part of it done. Then with this one, you slide it to the right. Then you slide it down. Then you slide it to the right again. Stupid fucking slippery ice physics. Who thinks they're fun? No one, that's who. And then once more. And the way out is nicely unlocked. Let's head over there. So we end up in this very tiny little corridor section that we can do nothing with, but that crack looks suspicious. Let's wolf up. And you can see, yeah, we can dig underneath it. So, in this section, there's a chest here. It contains a cool 20 rupees. And we've got actual space in our wallet now. There's a lot of white wolf foss around, which I'm going to mostly ignore, because this is our real goal. There's a chest here, and if we open it... It's got a key in it. So we can fight these white wolf foss, but they're kind of annoying to kill. Like, they run around a lot, you hit them once, you need to hit them like four or five times to actually kill them. Bit too annoying. So we're just gonna head through here. Fun fact about this dungeon, because these are doors that have like a twisty handle, apparently that means you can't use them in wolf mode. Um, so you have to be human to go through doors. Some freezers here, let's kill them with our nice new jump strike. Oh, well that was embarrassing. Yeah, when you hit a freezer with your sword, they go flying off in the opposite direction. Well, not the opposite direction, the direction is if you'd hit them, and it can be a real problem from bouncing around a lot. So jump strike is actually a nice way of taking care of them, but they've gone to the other side, so they're not really a problem. This door here has a lock on it, which you're gonna open if you dug up the chest, which we just found. And this one is locked, and we need to kill these freezers. So, let's actually test out a jump attack this time. There we go, that looked cool, didn't it? Didn't really help me a great deal, but looked cool. That's what really matters. It's all about looking cool. Oh, bollocks, I just need to make sure I don't actually land on them. But that's what the, the Hero Shade was saying. Go away! Oh my god. That's what the Hero Shade was saying about the jump attack being a potentially actually dangerous tactic, and it can genuinely damage you if you just, like, if you get hit during the charge up, or even when you're flying through the air, like, doing the actual jump part of it, you are still vulnerable during that time, so keep an eye out. So that's all we need to go through there, and that's um, where Yet are marked on our map. Uh, 
and welcome to an interesting enemy. The Chill Foss! These things look like two things for me. Firstly, they look like um, the Ice Titan from the Disney Hercules movie, if anyone remembers that. Um, but to me, these are what I imagined when I was reading Game of Thrones. These are what I imagined White Walkers to look like, which is why it really saddens me. They just look like zombie people, like slightly bluish people in the TV show, because I was like, I imagine them looking far less like humanoid, but far less human than they do, and Chill Foss were kind of what I had in my head. Anyway, if we head through here, Then we can get the chest we've been directed to, which contains... The Ordon Pumpkin, which was grown in our hometown of Ordon. Awesome. Not a key, is it? What's this? This isn't right. She got the wrong location. Want to go back and try and get her to remember where the key is? Unfortunately, we've got a little shortcut back. If we go through this door... Then we come out, this is actually kind of like the sliding block puzzle room. So at least we don't have to walk all the way back through that whole courtyard section. Anyway, if, yeah, if you touch those things they deal you cold damage, so don't do that. If you head through here. Then we're back in the kitchen with Yeto. If we speak to him. What flavor? Huh? Pumpkin! You have pumpkin, huh? Pumpkin! Pumpkin! Ah! Thanks, huh? You taste it if you want! So the soup I will now is now just regular soup, which will now heal six hearts. Quite useful. But, what we're really here for is Yetta. Because she gave us the wrong location. Let's see if she's got a better one. You find it, huh? What? Pumpkin? But why there? Oh, no good, huh? Where'd I leave it? Huh, maybe in that room. Go to room marked by symbol. That looks far more promising. It looks like it's in a very important location. So, let's head there. Check room I marked on map, huh? And yes, it will open another door for us. So if we head through this one, we can start heading towards that marked point. And now here, we actually come across briefly a new enemy. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I think it's like the giant freezer or something like that. This thing in the corner that breathes ice. It's the giant version of those things we've been knocking around, but we can't do anything with it for now. So we just need to come through to the corner here, turn back into a human, and open the door. Well, I wonder what it's telling us to do here. Um, beware of freezer, I believe. I'm gonna check this. I think they can be taken out and worn by bomb arrows, but hey, let's find out. That's not a bomb arrow, that's that's just a bomb. And wallop! Yes, they can, but I can also quite easily be taken out by bomb arrows, so watch out. So, we showed us that cannon, and here is a cannonball. So let's take that and move on. You would think the weight of that would make us slip around slightly less, but apparently not. So just watch out for the freezers while you're countering the cannonball. Or cannoning the carry balls, I nearly said there, and I think slightly did, because I- Oh, Bot legs. I don't know if wiggling the control stick makes you break out of um, being frozen faster, but it certainly feels like it does. Anyway, when we get to the end of where the cannon is, we need to shoot it. So, first things first, take the cannonball, put it in the rear. This is a breech-loading cannon rather than a standard cannon. Um, so, once you put the cannonball in, aim the cannon in the direction of your choice, which here for us is south. Grab your finest bombs, and place them in the cannon. And cover your ears! And that smashes through all of those kind of um, icy block things, and reveals a way that wasn't there before. The other ones just lead to nothing, really. But the cannonball's still there if you wanted to use it again, but I don't particularly. Let's head through here. And head to an interesting room. Bring out your claw shot here, trust me. Basically, we need to make our way across these very delicate paths. Ow! And there's ice keys and all sorts of annoying things. Claw shot, very good way of taking out ice keys, very good way of taking out that. Unlike the sword, sword? Uh, bow and arrow, it has unlimited ammo. If we head onto this bit where the freezer was, it's slippery, so we slide down it. Were we to do that in front of us here, we'd die, we'd just slip off the edge. But, we can kind of hop around to the side here. Kill that fucker. Again, that bit's frozen, so if we go over it, we'll die. We should just slide off to the side. So, let's go in here, let's grab this which contains 20 rupees. This place really feels like Darksiders. It feels like Stilitha's lair from that. Um, 
that's a very good game. Um, like, Darksiders is literally like, it's billed almost as kind of adult Zelda. And it is kind of like, it is a Zelda game, but it's not with, a, with Zelda characters. It's really cool. I really like it. Anyway, Compass. And I suppose that's as good a point as any to end the episode. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, in this episode, we have come kind of here. We've got the final, not the final hidden skill, the second to last hidden skill. We've met Yeti, Yeto even. And we've come here to Snowpeak Ruins in search of the final mirror shard. Final, second mirror shard. Get your terms right, Doctor. Um, so I hope you'll join me next episode for some more Snowpeak Ruins. Thank you very much and good day.